Okay, in this video, we're getting into change detection methods. And so just to um, to get you started with this, I'm, I'm going to start you with one, and we're going to do something called write function memory insertion. And uh, But I'm going to show you how to bring in the data first for that included in this video. So the one, uh, the one thing that we start with is opening up our files. So at this time, you should have your um, your four or eight, depending on if you're in partners or not, change detection stacks. So you can see I've done a classification that's going to be separate. That's a separate file. But I have done all of my transformations, and I have a transformation stack here. So I'm going to open that up. And it just automatically opens to whatever is in the top. So let's go to my transformation stack. So we can see here that I have my NDVI, my PCA, um, a ratio that I have decided with. And then I have my, um, my thermal band that I've put on the bottom there. And if you haven't put it on, that's OK. We can always add it in later. So I'm also going to open up my other stack so that I have that as well. And then I can open up that one. And I have my 2020, and you'll see that it's in the exact same order. So it is really important that both of your and all of your images have the exact same order when you put them in. So if you start with NDVI, all of your stacks need to start with NDVI. PCA next, all of your stacks need to be set up with PCA, etc. So now what we're going to do is we're going to stack again. So if you have four dates or eight dates, you want to put them all together into one big stack. So we go to the toolbox, and we're going to type in build oops, layer. So there's build layer stack. We'll double click on that. And we're going to click on the browse button. And we're going to include both of these. And we're going to include the entire thing. So they should already be subsetted. And they should already have all of the bands included. So then you press OK. And then we're going to click the, the button. And we are going to call this one the change detection stack all dates. If you have all years, that's fine too. If you only put two of them together like I am, then just call it those two dates. So like March 2013 and October 2020 in my case. You press OK and a few moments, take a few moments as it starts up, like as it stacks it. So just give it a moment. And then you'll see all of them together. Now what you're going to notice with this is that it didn't tell me, doesn't tell me what dates there are, except if you read the PCA. So this is where renaming your bands, especially if you put all four together, this is really, really important that you rename the bands now. So um, I'm going to go to the toolbox, and I'm going to type in edit. And then we'll see edit and the header that comes here. I'm going to go to my change detection stack that says all dates and press OK. And I get a window that looks like this. So what's important is this one here. So my band one is actually NDVI, and this one is my October 2020. And then my second one would be my PC, PC1, October 2020. So you can see that I'm going to include not only just the, not only the name of the band, but I also include the date. Just keep going down. Okay, so then I'm, I'm just gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna skip them. You're not allowed to. <laughs> so this one is my uh, land surface temperature over 2020. And this one is my ratio. It's actually my sweater ratio. And then I'm going to do the same with the next year. So this is my NDVI. Or 
2013. skip the other two. You're not allowed to, but that you have to, but I will in this video, just so that you're not sitting there watching me type things out. There's better things for me to be doing. This is square ratio. What they call it ratio last time. Just to make sure that I have the same name. Once I've named those, I can press OK, and you're going to see them update in here so I can actually see what year I'm working with. Now, um, now once you've done that, we can actually apply what the right function memory insertion. So I'm going to remove all of these off of the, the layers manager here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to transformation, one transformation, one transformation, and I do two, and I do two, and I do two dates, I do two dates, two dates. So, so I'm going, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to start with two, I'm going to start with the land surface temperature, the land surface temperature. So generally speaking, you want to use, um, I like to use the, the newest one first and then the oldest one second. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. So my red and my green are going to be my land surface temperature and then for 2020. And then my blue is going to be 2013. So ideally, well, not ideally, actually it's very unideal, but I, ideally, I guess, unideally, we're going to um, hope or see that 2013 is actually cooler than 2020. So I'll hit load data and I end up with this image. So I'm going to zoom to extents and now I can view my data. So anything that is in yellow, let's expand this, means that it's got a higher value in 2020 than it did in 2013. Anything with the blue means that it is higher in 2013 than it is in 2020. So from this, from my image, for example, I can see that the by the water, it is cooler in 2013. I'm also looking at two different months, right? So I have October and I have March. So I can't really pull too much information out of this. But I can definitely see overall that the yellow seems to dominate the, Im the image. So I could say that overall, we're seeing an increase in land surface temperature over those um, seven years and especially to the northwest, where in the southeast, we are seeing a little bit cooler temperatures in 2020. That's kind of all I can say. I can use my cursor value, and I can place my points on, for example, the yellow, and I can see that my temperature in, um, in, our, in October 2020 was about 25 degrees, and then in 2013, it was about 18 degrees. Or if I come over here, I can see that it was 16 degrees in, 20, in 2020, but it was 21 degrees in 2030. So there's a, there's a lot that you can pull from that. Like obviously, land topography makes a big difference. So like the, in, in, if I wanted to see the real data, I'd have to pull that up. So I can go here and I would find my, um, my data. So I, actually, that was what I wanted. No, that's not what I wanted. So I can open up my multispectral data, for example, and I'm going to put it below. Move 
it down here. We're going to remove this one up to the top. Like so. so, at least it's there. Now I can turn this one on and off and I can try to identify what's being cooler. So for example, uh, we talked a little bit about how vegetation can keep things cooler. Oops, I'm going to make that a little bit too close here. But if I turn this on and off, where am I seeing it to be the coolest? Well, it's definitely cooler in areas of higher vegetation. And there's a little creek there that I can see. But really, anywhere that I'm seeing a denser forest is where I am going, I expect that I'm going to see cooler temperatures. So, for example, if I choose here, I can see that it, it was definitely warmer in 2013 than it is in 2020. But if I move over here, it's going to be warmer in 2020 than or sorry, and uh, this one is actually weird, it's yellow. So actually this is a really good learning t time. So th th to me right away, I'm like, this doesn't make sense because this is yellow. But it says that it has no stretch. But how is it that we can get yellow and no blue in that pixel, even though the blue is higher? Well, it's a really light yellow compared to, for example, here, where I am seeing, again, about a, a one degree difference but um, because it's a lighter color oh there we go now it's now it's below but you can see how close they are so the the stretching that happens on the this image can really impact how you interpret it so this is a, on a linear two percent so if i said no stretch i mean i don't see you can see how dark it is now there's like nothing there but if you look really closely, you can find yellow. <laughs> There's some yellow spots. Look at the noise that we're seeing that's being left behind. I have some specks here. So I can go around and try to find areas that I see. But as soon as I apply, like for example, equalization, now I'm going to start seeing, again, the numbers that are going to start looking a little odd. So contrast stretching can be very deceiving. And so that is something to keep in mind when you are working with this, this change detection method. It's actually a big caveat that I want you guys to keep in mind and perhaps even talk about. Because I can give you this and say, hey, look at all these numbers. They're going to look um, this way. But then you start looking at it and you're like, wait a sec, these numbers, this number doesn't match this one. It should be another color. So why is it showing up like that? So um, anything that... Uh, any questions that you have about that, that'd be, you can definitely ask me. You can also create other composites with this, right? So we go back to my big stack. If I wanted to look at NDVI, then I can look at NDVI just like so, hit load data, and this is where my NDVI is. So I can see anything in blue, Let's expand that. Anything in blue, it was higher NDVI values in 2013. Anything in yellow has NDVI values higher in 2020, approximately, right? So again, we take out our cursor value. We can see that if we try to get some yellow here, we're, we do see that the NDVI is higher, so that's a good thing. Um, and, and then if we go over to the blues, so like up here, we see that it was higher then. So that is, um, that is the write function memory insertion. Uh, and you can do uh, you can do it with any 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 band that you like. You're going to choose the one. Oops, I wasn't supposed to do that one. Um, you can choose whichever. We, sorry, no, no, I'm all distracted. <laughs> so that was on the square ratio. That one, whatever is going to be best for your particular application is the one that you're going to use. So if you're like, oh, you know, I really need to see the changes in vegetation. Then you'll use that. What if maybe you use the um, like a water index? Maybe that one is more applicable. Then use that one. So when you're doing this one, please make sure that you're very aware of, of which one you're using and why. So that kind of summarizes the right function memory insertion and how to get your stack ready to go. Um, then in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do band ratios and band differencing, like temporal differencing and temporal ratios. And then the third video will be on classification type. And then there's um, like the, sorry, a multi-temporal classification. And the last one will be post-classification. So 
Um, I hope they found this helpful and I didn't go too fast. But it all comes down to the interpretation in the end.